Holy and gracious God, we seek your spirit now, your presence. Move in this space and let us know your word for us this day. We pray in your son's name. Amen. As I told the kids, there is perhaps no stranger story in all of the Gospels than the Transfiguration. It's a story of unexplained sights, sounds, light. It's the story that gives us the phrase, mountaintop experience. Jesus and three of the disciples, the three that were always the big three, go with him to a mountaintop. And there, something happens. Something unexplainable, something beyond words. Now the Gospels, being words, try to give it explanation, try to put words into it, but they really can't quite. All they can give us is the glimpse of Jesus changed, Jesus transfigured. Elijah and Moses appear somehow. Then the voice of heaven says, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And then the event ends. As suddenly as it has began, all the brightness, all the long dead prophets and the voice are gone. And it's just Jesus and the disciples going back down the mountain. As I said, it's a weird story, if also a dramatic one. But it's also a turning point story. Within the Gospels, this is the story as much as any other that moves us from the Galilean ministry of preaching and healing and teaching to the trek toward Jerusalem. After this mountaintop experience, Jesus will make no more turn away, but will march steadily toward Holy Week and the cross. And just in case we miss that turn, the Gospel writer compiles it in a way to make it very clear for right before this passage is the very first prediction of Jesus of his death. And very soon after this passage is the second prediction of his death. This is the turning point, the march toward that death, toward the cross. <coughs> the transfiguration, the turning point toward the cross, which makes it a great reading for us here, right before Lent. For we too are making a transition in our life together in this church here. We have been talking Epiphany before that Christmas, celebrating and remembering the light that comes into the world and asking ourselves what that light reveals to us about God, what Jesus reveals to us about God. And now on this week, this coming Wednesday, we enter into Lent, a time in which we carefully examine ourselves. We ask how we might live up to God's call in our lives. How we do well and how we don't. In this transition period of the church year, I believe the transfiguration story can help us in many ways. Number one, the transfiguration reminds us of God's glory. And that's honestly part of why the story is so weird and so odd. Of all the non-Easter stories in the Gospels, this one more than any other shows the glory of God enfleshed in Jesus. The light shines, the prophets of old return, God speaks from a cloud so that all who are gathered there can hear. The power of God is shown in ways more mysterious than in any of the other Gospels. God's presence is pronounced. God's glory shines in Jesus. And something happens that is definitely not normal. If you wanted to, you could explain away other things in the story. Maybe the feeding was sharing, or the healings were about bringing people into the community who were otherwise left out. But in the transfiguration, something happens that is only a God. that shows God's glory. Within the Gospels, this event is a bit of a preview for the resurrection. It confuses the disciples. They don't get it for a long time. But those of us who are reading or listening to it now understand. We know how the story ends and that this story is a glimpse of Easter morning. 
where at the body of resurrection, Jesus will be transformed into a body that is changed, that reflects God's glory, that is a flesh and is not quite a flesh. And we get a glimpse of that body, of that change, right here. As Jesus is transfigured, and something happens. It's also a moment where Jesus is empowered for what is to come. For the gospel, three synoptic gospels especially make it clear that the cross is hard, even for Jesus. In the garden, he will pray that the cup be taken away from him. Going to Jerusalem, facing death, is not easy, even for the Son of God. But the transfiguration moment gives him power to keep the journey on, to keep walking so he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. And this, I think, is what the story can do for us. It reminds us of God's power, of God's glory, and in that reminder can give us the strength to face our own journeys of faith. As I said in Lent, we will take time to stop and examine ourselves, to put stock of how we succeed and how we don't. In Lent, we will look at ourselves and try to do so clearly that's hard. That's very hard. We don't always like what we see. And we need power to be able to look clearly and be open to what that look reveals. And this story reminds us that power to do that is in God. This story reminds us that is God who empowers us, God who holds us, the one who comes to mountaintops and valleys, the one who is glorious beyond our imagining, the one we glimpse in this passage. The transfiguration reminds us that we are empowered by our powerful and glorious God for all the Lenten journeys ahead. And that's good because the second thing the story reminds us of is Humans tend to fail more often than not. That's why I kept the ending of the reading in. If you look in the lectionary, it says it's optional. Those last few verses about the healing, the healing that the disciples couldn't do. But they remind us of our feelings. The disciples have just seen the transfiguration. They should be overwhelmed with faith in Jesus, and yet they can't cast out a demon. They will later, eventually, in the book of Acts, which is tied to the book of Luke, but right here, in this moment, they can't. They've just had the most powerful experience imaginable, and yet they still fail. They had a major up and yet they still have the doubt of not being able to reach out and heal as they could have done. The whys almost aren't important. It's mostly because they aren't Jesus. And uh, in the book of Luke, they haven't had Pentecost yet. But it serves as a reminder to us that we too will fail. We will strive, I hope, very hard in Lent and beyond to listen to the kingdom, to work for God's justice and righteousness and mercy here on earth to be people of love and caring who do all the things we know to do but the reality is that work will fail we will not live up to all God hopes for us this side of the kingdom we will not live up to all that God desires for us because we're human beings human beings fail and sin fail to live up to what God wants, just as the disciples did. And when we do that, we're in good company. For the twelve disciples, two failed. Failed in the Gospels, failed at times, even after the Gospels, to fully grasp right away what God was doing. But God was with them. Jesus was with them on that mountaintop and on that valley when they couldn't cast out the demon. The story reminds us that 
God is with us in all the ups and downs, the mountaintops and the valleys, empowering, encouraging, and working with and through us, through it all. And that, friends, is the final piece of this story, the final reminder that comes from it, in that God does use all of it. God uses the transfiguration moments, the mountaintop moments, the great and glorious moments when we are on fire for God and doing everything right and almost perfect and we can't speak wrongly, we can't act wrongly, and our love is overflowing. And God uses those moments when we're much more human, when we fail, and we're not quite living up to what we think God wants for us. God takes our efforts meager though they may sometimes be, and uses them for the kingdom. After all, the disciples couldn't cast out the demon, but he was cast out. The disciples failed, but their story is still here for us to learn from, to grow from, to know and remember. God takes those really good moments. God takes even those moments where we feel totally out of it. And by the grace of God, uses each one. That bit by bit, piece by piece, day by day, hour by hour, the kingdom might come closer. And the love, grace, and mercy of God be felt evermore. Friends, after this Sunday, we begin our journey of Lent. We begin a journey of knowing ourselves better, of seeking from a mountaintop and our valley to know who we are and how God calls us to change, to transform, and to love. The good news of this passage is that as we make that journey, we do so empowered by the glorious grace and love of God that empowers us on those mountaintops and in those valleys and takes all that we have, the good and the bad and undecided, and uses them for the glory of God, for the kingdom of for the love that God has for the entire world. And that, friends, is good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us say that.